Hello and welcome to But Suddenly, the show where five friends write scripts for one another to read aloud on the stream, uh, continuing a sprawling story week by week. Um, this show started as something that we did to entertain ourselves during lockdown. Uh, we didn't fancy doing the whole quiz show thing and we were kind of useless at baking bread. So uh, the five of us were twiddling our thumbs to a certain degree and decided, oh, why, not, why don't we do something creative and why don't we write for one another? So we started writing scripts uh, at the very start of lockdown that we would read once a week to one another. Ended up being really fun and we thought, why can't we do this to other people, to an audience? Why don't we uh, stream this to other people? So that's what we ended up doing. We ended up thinking it might be more interesting to have some sort of cohesion in the story, some sort of like regular narrative structure running through it. So what we ended up doing, whereas normally we would just write different stories to one another, we decided to make it one long story, one epic, strange journey that uh, we would take ourselves on. Uh, and here it is. Uh, this is the very first episode written by Adam Bunn and uh, I thoroughly hope you enjoy it. All the best. Anyway, so um, in this episode, we're going to likely introduce, uh, we're going to actually like probably not introduce the script so much, I don't think. It's going to, I think it's better works as a cold read because the, the thing that we everyone's got to realize is that we haven't even got a clue what the concept of this is. Normally when we would like read out our stuff, I would go, uh, it's about a guy, uh, it's about an octopus who murders people. Um, but like, <laughs> but in this one. True story, true story. <laughs> true story, true story. <laughs> But in this one, we don't even know like any of the character names. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know where it's going to be at when it ends. Um, no. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, before we start, though, uh, I thought we might as well ask you, Adam, how did you find writing it? Um, t I found it tough, but really tough. I can't remember how we nominate, how you became nominated. Yeah, neither can I, Phil. I, I don't remember that either. <laughs> I'd that, say it was a short source is system, but a I think it was a mystery. <laughs> I probably volunteered like a. Gim. <laughs> um no it's been it's been it's been tough um i think because we've got this idea that this is you know this potentially could last for as long as we want it to last for the idea of actually just going like yeah now just start that off is <laughs> is is hard um and it's it's hard to kind of obviously when you write you, you write a script normally you kind of put quite a bit of effort into thinking about your characters and all oh, this person has this backstory and therefore will act in this particular way and I'm going to set up this world because later on this is going to happen whereas beyond the first kind of 20 pages that we're going to read today I have no concept of that so it's it's, it's weird writing something that may be ultimately pointless is what I'm saying you have no idea so whether your characters will um will persist really i suppose yeah so you have to make it kind of interesting hopefully and entertaining again hopefully but to the same token not put so much effort into it that you kind of get too invested i guess i am in for it okay uh so just a, just a few things before we actually start uh the person who wrote it is doing the script this, this, the script descriptors the scene descriptors, the scene descriptors. Uh, the person who wrote it doing the scene description, so Adam's going to do the scene descriptions, and the rest of us are just going to type in when we see our names. Uh, my name's Yolo, and you can probably see everyone else's name on the thing, unless you want to introduce yourself. We have our own rhombus. We have our rhombuses. I think yours <laughs> is the only one that needed um, articulation, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, it's not Lolo, it's yeah. Yolo. Lolo, <laughs> 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 Lolo. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> have, you, have you have you given divvied up characters? Yes. I assume it's, it's going to be listed on the script. Is it? yeah. It's on yes, beside the beside the character name as we go through, and and I guess I should say once you know who you've got, everybody except for me and Burge only has one one character. My characters oh, are both cool. minimal. Um, and then Burge, Burge is doing thirty percent of the scripts. <laughs> Burge has a character who pops up at the end. But there's no overlap with his, his initial character. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be like so uh, that, like a uh, second. Um, what was it? Like um, Mr. the Clumps. 
where a bird is playing every yeah. character. <laughs> Essentially, it would just Eddie Murphy and just puts himself in more and more roles. It's like it's like Austin Powers <laughs> three as well. It's like that. It's just... <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> maybe we should start before it devolves any further. <laughs> Do we need the title, Adam? Well, it's, it's, it's episode one. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just wanted it. I'm just, I'm just I so could, nervous about scrolling down. I didn't know I was supposed to go with a, a swift, a cool, a cool <laughs> title for it, but <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Okay, are you ready? <clears> Hundred <throat> percent. Let's go. So it's. External desert daytime. Our story begins on a lonely desert road. The sun beats down from directly overhead, scorching what's left of the tarmac. The sky is vast, blue and empty, broken only by distant rocky outcrops. The quiet is slowly interrupted by the rumble of an engine. Through the distant heat haze, we see a rising cloud of dust. A silver bus glints in the sun as it speeds through the landscape. Inside, its windows are darkened and a mirrored wall blocks the driver from passenger view or contact. Various figures lie motionless, scattered on seats throughout the sterile bus. An imposing, burly man stands at the front, clipboard in hand. He wears an unusual militaristic style uniform, navy blue with orange piping. Wake up ladies, rise and shine! He waits for the briefest of seconds before blasting an air horn. That's where we like drop in a sound effect there, guys, I think, yeah? Air horn, wait, give me a second, I've got an air horn. I knew you'd have one. Laser? <laughs> <laughs> the noise reverberates painfully around the metal shell of the bus. The group begins to stir. Ramon is a tattooed Latino 20-something. He's closest to the front and rises first, rubbing his head. Ugh, great harajo. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Ellie... A pale, edgy-looking teenage girl also responds wearily. Where am I? Zeep, <laughs> ethereally blonde, blue eyes, and without discernible gender, sits up, looking around with suspicion and wide-eyed wonder in equal measure. It, it can't be. Beautiful. Ted, an elderly and friendly-faced African-American man, rises all close... <laughs> Sorry, I gotta read it. <laughs> rises awkwardly closer to the back of the bus, looking confused. This is where lack of prep doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, just, uh, who are you? Or where am I? Who are these people? I'm going to adjust that as we go. Fine, let's go. <laughs> the voices continue evolve. over each other, escalating in volume. The colonel smiles at the unfolding chaos and confusion. This isn't his first rodeo. Can it, maggots? All in good time. First things first, roll call. He looks at his clipboard. A Cora. Ellie responds, voice dripping in sarcasm and barely repressed teenage angst. Um, hi. Listen, could you, like... <laughs> the colonel makes a loud tick on his sheet, ignoring her entirely. Gonzalez! Ramon doesn't look up. He wears his white vest and bad attitude with pride. Fuck you! The colonel ticks again. Kid! There's no answer. Aaron, kid! Still nothing. The colonel looks up. The group look at each other before noticing a figure at the back of the bus. Aaron is hunched over on the back row, his arms tightly hugging his legs, almost curled into a ball. His face is obscured by a large pair of black sunglasses and his entire body is hidden beneath a trench coat. He nods nervously at his name. Candidates will speak up when spoken to, damn it. O'Shea! Ted stands and approaches, smiling, hand outstretched. He doesn't seem troubled by the pyjamas and dressing gown he's wearing, or the crazy appearance of his thinning grey hair. Hi, uh, listen, I think uh, we got off on the wrong foot. I'm Edward. I know who you are, O'Shea. Now sit down. Now listen here, son. You, you made a mistake. I'm just... No, you listen here, O'Shea. I said sit the fuck down. Now. Ted is visibly taken back, but persists in approaching the colonel. Ted smiles again and places a hand on the colonel's shoulder. Look, I... In a blink, the colonel grabs Ted's arm and wrenches it 90 degrees. Members of the group wince at the audible snapping sound. The older man begins to let out a scream, but before it can properly form into a sound, the colonel's massive fist slams into Ted's jaw, knocking him firmly to the ground and out of sight. The thud silences the bus. A few moments pass, the colonel examining their faces for further reaction. A stirring begins on the floor. Ted's hands appear on the seat back as he slowly pulls himself up. 
As his head rises, he turns to the group. He has de-aged by at least 40 years, now a young, handsome man with a full head of hair. He smiles and waves awkwardly at the group before wincing and gripping his injured arm. Anyone else feel like making friends? Cut to absolutely <laughs> sick title sequence <laughs> on the <theme> I don't know if you've got any ideas for the actual tune. I was thinking, you know, just a lot of a lot of synth essentially is what I was going for. Wait, let me let me try let me try and um, a fine one, like late late Queen, something like that. Like, can, can you guys hear these sounds? No. No. God damn it. No. Um, that'll be handy. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter right now. We no, can put them in post, y'all. Do it in post. Do it in post. I'll do it in post. Do it in post. I'll do it in post. Carry on. Uh, I do have a, a, a an option thing over my face on the menu. Yeah, there we go, right, fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's just how I pictured Ramon. So <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was the opening the opening scene. I don't. Do we want to discuss it as we go, or do we just want to go through and then and then decipher at the end? I'm, I'm eager to learn more. Yeah, uh, how does it? Just turn it off. Turn it off, mate. The voice mod on. Did you not know? Oh my god. No, I had no idea. <laughs> we should keep it on. <laughs> was that a baby for a second there? That was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were a baby. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right, these are, these are the. So, uh, you can hear my sounds now then, so that we can f pick a theme song. Cracked it. No. No. <laughs> laser. No, that's just a that's that's just, just a, la that's just a laser. Tube. That's just a laser sound. Laser. <laughs> cool. No, let's just carry on. I say we carry on and talk about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe read it again so we can uh, discuss it. Okay. <clears throat> so external a holding pen. Day. The colonel holsters a pistol as he closes the gate to a large chain link paddock, locking our group inside. The silver bus starts up behind him and trundles off into the distance. Ramon picks himself up off the floor and slams into the gate, his face inches from the colonel's. This is bullshit, man! you got no right to do this! Definitely a time. The colonel, <laughs> the colonel smirks at him and turns to walk away. He marches over to a singular concrete structure in the, in the desert, no bigger than a garage. There's an electronic beep as he approaches and a door slides open. He enters and the door closes behind him. Just wait, homie! Ramon turns to the paddock. Zeep is kneeling over Ted, creating a makeshift sling for his injured arm out of the dressing gown. Ellie paces the length of the cage, muttering to herself. Aaron hunches in the far corner by himself. Ramon approaches Zeep and Ted. Yo, what the hell was that? That shit was loco! Straight up voodoo! <laughs> Ted sits up awkwardly, nursing his arm. You're telling me? I was just trying to talk to him. Ted laughs, Ramon half joins in, unsure of the joke. Not him, man, you! That black magic back on the bus, that was... What the hell did you say? What? Wait, no, you got it wrong, man. Black magic. The devil's magic. Curses and shit. I'm just messing with you, man. I know what you meant. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Ramon laughs, somewhat nervously, and offers a fist. Ted bumps it with his good arm. All right, all right. For real, though. What happened back there? Ted studies Ramon for a moment, weighing up both him and the situation. You know, I'm not actually sure. I've never gone that far before. Guessing that right hook really did a number on me. Ellie stops pacing close to the group. Wait, what? That wasn't the first time. I wish. It started when I was a kid. Little things at first. Clothes suddenly not fitting. My parents just figured I was growing quick, I guess. It uh, got weird when the clothes would fit again a year later, though. And then, well, one day my folks woke up to a grown man in their kid's bed. They didn't believe it would be, so I left. Whoa. Yeah. So you can't, like, control it? Nope, never have. It'd be useful if I could, wouldn't it? Cool, even. But no, it's a right pain in the ass. Just happens, and I rarely had a good time, either. Ellie and Ramon pause, as if expecting something to happen. It doesn't. Why are you sharing this? Be more careful. It could be, it could be dangerous. I went to sleep in my own bed last night and now I'm locked in a cage in the middle of the desert. 
I figured, what the hell? Ted looks around at the group. They're all now watching him. I'm guessing my skips have got something to do with me being here. Always knew that they'll end me in something serious eventually. But the question is, what are you guys doing here? Zeep stands and walks to the fence perimeter, staring off into the desert. Ramon watches him and turns to Ellie, now looking at her feet as they scrape in the gravel. He shrugs. I make what smells. <laughs> I just read that. <laughs> Zeep, Ellie and Ted all turn to him. You make smells. <laughs> I don't... What does that mean? It means... Ramon raises an open palm in Ellie's direction, a look of concentration on his face. A few moments pass in silence, all looking confused. Then, Ellie's face begins to contort and she clasps her hand over her nose and mouth. Oh, what the hell is that? I make smells. <laughs> <laughs> Ted laughs and claps to himself as Ellie runs to the opposite side of the cage, gasping for her. Now that is some black magic. <laughs> a fair high five. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so just anything? Anything I can imagine. No big backstory, though. I just figured everybody could do it until I realised they couldn't, and I was... Ramon trails off, suddenly downbeat. Different. This kind of shit wouldn't go down well for me, you know? I kept it quiet. Ramon quickly shakes off the serious moment. His swagger quickly returns, and he looks over to Ellie, who has just regained her composure. Hey, you okay? Sorry about that. Just thought it'd be easier to... know her feelings, yeah? Next time, just do chocolate or cook grass or something, yeah? Lamone holds his hand up in apology. In my defence, I was 12 when I finally cracked it. Boys will be boys, right? Nice man. So what's your deal anyway? What brought you to the magic school bus? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but I got nothing. Nothing special about me. I just want to get out of here. Lamone and Ted look slightly disappointed with the flat response. She's lying. Group look over to Zeep, who is still leaning against the fence, staring to the horizon mysteriously. Excuse me? Zeep turns to face them, eyes intense. You're lying, Ellie. It's something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here with us. Ellie scoffs. <laughs> is that a good scoff? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Beautiful exactly. scoff. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> who you think you are, man, or who you think I am, <laughs> but you can... <laughs> But you've got the wrong dude. <laughs> Man. Zeep reaches into a jacket pocket and pulls out a small envelope. They walk to Ellie. He walks. Uh, they walk to Ellie and hand it over, eyes fixed on him. We're all here for a reason, Ellie, and we have to figure out what it is as soon as we can. It's important. Zeep motions to the envelope in Ellie's hands. Ramon and Ted stare at the exchange. Dude's intense. Shh. Ellie reluctantly opens the envelope. She pulls out a small stack of photographs and slowly rifles through the first couple, her mouth parting as she goes. What the? She holds up one of the photographs, dropping the rest to the floor. It is a portrait of her, but a clearly older her, in a navy and orange jumpsuit. What the fuck is this? I was hoping you could tell me. You see, I've had these photographs for quite some time, and I've been looking for you. For all of you. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Look, I woke up in the middle of a field six months ago. Those on a flash drive tied around my neck. No memory of how I got there, who I am, where I came from. Just five photos and a message saying, The fuck? The fuck? That's you. Sorry, 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 sorry. Wow. <laughs> you want to steal mine, you're, you're in the moment. It's good. It's good. It worked quite well. It worked quite well. With yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> Ramon stares at another of the photos Ellie has dropped, dumbstruck. A portrait of his own older self in the same uniform stares back. He looks down at Ted, who has shuffled over and is now staring at his own picture too. Ted looks almost impressed. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to do it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I wrote that line specifically for Phil to say it in that accent. So good. <laughs> worth, <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Ted picks up the remaining photograph from the dirt and begins to examine it. Ted. S sorry, I'm just I'm st I'm stuck in the moment. <laughs> so this one must be... My God. He looks over to the corner of the cage where Aaron is now standing ominously. Go on. It's... Uh, 
Well, I think it's you, but uh, you're... you're... Aaron lumbers over with a stilted walk. He begins to unbutton the long trench coat as the front parts, four extra limbs are revealed growing from Aaron's torso. They stretch and flex as if for the first time in a long time. His walk is unnerving as he bounds them on four legs, stopping just short of the group. I'm what? Well, pretty much that. <laughs> Ted turns the photo to Aaron and shows a face that is recognizably his but overrun by several sets of black eyes. His stance appears horizontal, and his body and all eight limbs are covered in dark fuzz. Aaron looks distraught upon seeing it. Holy shit! What happened, bro? <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Read the room, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That was great. Aaron contemplates for a moment before continuing somberly. I was bidden. On a trip with school, some weird spider bit me, and the next thing I know, I'm starting to change. Oh man, so you can make webs? No, I... What about climb walls and stuff? No, uh, no, no, it's just... You must be super strong, yeah. It's just the legs, alright? And <laughs> he hesitates before slowly removing his sunglasses, revealing an extra pair of beady eyes growing right beside his normal pair. And these... With more to come if that pictures did you believe Oh man, bummer. Seems like you got a raw deal. You could have been like one of them guys from the comics, you know? The human spider or something catchier. The group nod in agreement. An arachnid-based superhero would be <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. All I got was deformity and a taste for insects. The group laugh at what they hoped was a joke. <laughs> Aaron joins in. Seems he hasn't laughed in some time. Eventually, a quiet ease falls upon them. Anyway, what message? What? Aaron points one of his arms at Zeke. You said there was a message with the pictures. What was it? It said, save your friends, save your future. The group share a look amongst themselves. Like I said, we were meant to be here together. I call bullshit, man. I'm not buying it. And what's your deal, anyway? For all we know, you could be the reason we were dragged out here in the first place. Why should we believe you? I don't have friends. Might be nice to have some again. Look, we just met. And by all accounts, we're a group of fuck-ups. We're not friends. Zeep smiles. Well, not yet. Zeep reaches into his jacket again and pulls out the final photograph. He unfolds it slowly to the group, who gather closer to see. It shows their older selves gathered together with Aaron's arms wrapped around all of them. They're smiling. Alongside them is Zeep, but he looks most exactly the same as he does at this moment, not aged at all. Behind the group is the, is, behind the group in the photo is a small concrete structure. Holy shit, that's... Ellie turns to look at the small building the colonel entered earlier. As she does, she starts to see two figures standing just outside the doorway watching them. One is the colonel, looming ominously in the now setting sun. Beside him is a small, prim looking man wearing a lab coat. He's clapping slowly, his voice precise and mechanical. It truly warms my heart to see candidates <laughs> bonding so quickly. Brilliant. Truly. I was only recently saying to my colleagues here to foster such relationships. <laughs> It will make what's to come easier, I said. Didn't I say that, Colonel McGuffin? <laughs> <laughs> Colonel nods, smirking. You see? Easier for all concerned. <laughs> Glorious. Fantastic. Oh, I love it. There is a moment's silence as Dr. Leichtenberg smiles to himself in agreement. He motions to the Colonel and they approach the paddock. The Colonel opens the gate. They both enter. The colonel closes and locks the gate behind them and stands in front of it, hand resting on his sidearm. Dr. Leichtenberg moves into the paddock toward the group. Who the fuck are you, dude? What are we doing here? My name is Dr. von Leichtenberg. <laughs> you may call me Dr. L. I run this facility. As for what you're doing here, all in good time, Ramon. How do you know my name? Oh, I know a great deal more than that, my friend. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, that's a corpse. My eyes are watering. Yep. Oh. <laughs> All right, though, a great deal more than that, my friend. And I suggest you control your temper, lest you create a stink. <laughs> Dr. Hell, Dr. L quietly composes himself, quickly composes himself. <laughs> Nobody else laughs, but Ramon notices me back down. How, how could you know about that? Dr. L places a hand on Ramon's shoulder. My dear boy, I know everything there is to know about you. About all of you, and what makes you unique. The group glance at each other. Ellie turns away. Aaron begins backing away to the corner again. Dr. L addresses him solemnly. And none more so than you, Mr. Kid. You don't need to hide away here, I can assure you. You are all very welcome here. And what's more, we do not shun you for what makes you different. In fact, you might say we encourage it. Turns attention to Ellie, who is now looking at him. No matter what trouble it might have caused you in the past. Dr. L extends a gloved hand in Ellie's direction, nodding to her encouragingly. She glances at the picture in her hand before discarding it and reaches to take the Dr. L's hand, a tear rolling down her cheek. But suddenly! (laughs) Well done, mate. Good job. That was great. That was fantastic. (laughs) Superbly, superbly. It was really good. Oh, mate, that was so good. Yeah, really good, really good stuff. I mean, like, it's so fun. And, you know, because we had no idea of what it was going to be like. (laughs) Completely unexpected as well. That was a bit. Yeah, it was brilliant. (laughs) I could, you Thank could, you, I could, you couldn't have, I could have, uh, in, never in a million years predicted that was what, what the way Same. that was going to start. I love it though. I thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly just, love it. I did not expect. You completely, you completely ruined it for me. <laughs> I, what I was going to do. I, I, but to the point where I was going to, I was going to go wild. But now I have to continue this. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wild over well, that. I, I, yeah. I, I think, like, like, hopefully some of my disparate kind of just thoughts for the last few weeks have kind of made some kind of sense. So I've tried to keep it, like, kind of as broad as I, I can, whilst also, like, hinting at, obviously, like, potential other things that, in theory, could exist in this world so, to sort of try and create, I suppose, like a jumping-off point, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was, it was fucking hard. <laughs> That's why it's essentially, like, very obviously kind of an amalgamation of a lot of disparate <laughs> things pulled together and kind of... A pastiche of like other bits and bobs and stuff and i think what's got to be quite interesting is that it honestly started as a lot more spoofy than what it eventually became i can't remember whether i mentioned this to you guys so i eventually came up with the first came up with the idea of just what if it was like a bunch of superhero type people but it's all just absolutely shite powers that, like, <laughs> not powers that would be useful in any kind of situation the smell thing was like the first one that I thought. <laughs> You're like that's just nonsense it's like how's that going to help in any situation so i thought well that'd be fun and then I had other ideas of like stupid things, like the idea of like, what if a guy's been bitten by a spider, but he just gets like the shit end of the stick, <laughs> and the cool Spider-Man powers, he just gets like deformed and turned into an actual spider. Um, and I kind of thought, well, yeah, so I'll just like bring these together in some kind of like group type thing, which is open-ended, so that it could be good or bad, you don't, don't kind of know. Um, but then as I was writing it, it just suddenly got like more and more serious and kind of a bit intense at times. And I, I think that like, serves it though. This is quite serves. dramatic and quite cool. So, um, so a lot of the humour kind of fell out of it. Like, I don't know whether I should tell you what like I had in mind for some of the other characters, to be honest, because I don't want to influence where anything goes, I suppose. Um, but there are clues in there as to what the other people can do or can't do, um, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> It started out as a ridiculous spoof, but then became what potentially could be quite a dramatic TV show. <laughs> I love can we, it. Can, can we can we discuss like what we think? What we as in in the sense of what we think the powers? Well, uh, are it's, in the tale. I mean, it's up to you guys. I suppose if if I tell you, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to continue that path. I suppose, but um, yeah, was was the was the was was the plan that Zeep was essentially immortal? My or, idea. What, my I, I, idea isn't he like a hive mind? Because he refers to himself as we, you would refer to him as like oh, uh, they go up to him at one point. Is he a hive that mind? Was just, no, no, 
uh, the, the they thing was like a gender neutral thing because oh. uh, he doesn't have a discernible de- gender um, I just said he he doesn't have a discernible <laughs> gender it's, it's ridiculous um, but no my idea for Zeep was that um, they, they they come from the future the, the idea I had was, is that he's a time traveller but he has the idea I had was he, he, there's no there's no memory of the future so he co- he's come back from the future but with zero memory of it other than just like he knows he's from the future but with <laughs> zero kind of like anything to act on that in any way so that was where that kind of started from and then it became this Oops, idea well he needs sorry. he needs some sorry Phil, what you doing Phil's gone my camera's I'm, I'm still here <laughs> carry on carry on ignore me <laughs> ignore me <laughs> he needs some kind of proof of of him being from the future so the original idea was well maybe he's just got like some kind of futuristic ID card that's got like a date of birth that's in the future or something like that so I came up with the idea of like okay so maybe you can have kind of like flashbacks or like memories of something and then the idea of the photographs kind of came into it so I, I went with that but the original concept was yeah he's for the shit ideas yeah he's a time traveller but he has he has no idea how or why which was quite ridiculous <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a really clever. Like, but I'm from the future, but I have no nothing to give nothing to give you. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's <laughs> going right back on camera. Oh, that's, that's fine. Beautiful. Yeah, you st- you're still complete black from what I can see. Anyway, <laughs> did you see a second ago? Phil reverted to his base form. It was just numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. He's back. Let me gloriously sorry, sorry, get him me. back. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That way. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So um, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like honestly, like because it's like it, it's such a. It, I was thinking about it for the last couple of weeks, and I was thinking like you could be, for one, like that was just very generous of you, like leaving two powers for us to write, because you know like I don't hundred percent taken all the powers and made it force, force them upon you, but like very generous that there's essentially two people that you know that have powers up for grabs. But I was really like I really like the idea that it's like narratively driven because. In my head, the only thing I could think of, like, I was really grateful not to have to do the first episode because the only thing I could think of doing is, like, like I don't know, like, three ca- one character or three characters just, like, go off on a little adventure that doesn't have, like, any bearing on anything so that someone else can sort of, like, take it anywhere else. But I really like the narrative structure of it now because it's going to be, like, a, a true epic. It's going to be unreal. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm I mean, super yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I think... You could still do completely anything off the back of it, I think. Like, you could kind of jump back to the bus driver who's driving the bus away if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, you could do anything like that. Mm. But then I kind of thought, well, yeah, I'll set up at least some basis of something because, I don't know, because it was an idea I had and it was probably the, the best way I could think of writing, to, to be fair, I suppose. Some semblance of a, of a story or hint of a story. I guess. <clears throat> so, um, but then I did, I did what I was, I think I was hopefully it kind of came across I was I tried to be really careful of not making wherever they are and wherever they're being taken in trains that good or bad like it's kind of you don't you don't particularly know whether they're there for a good reason or, or not um, yeah I think like, obviously it has von, like a von, von Lichtenberg was suitably yeah. sort of yeah, ambivalent like, when he could go either way with him yeah. <laughs> yeah. favourite character absolute favourite character I'm going to write a, I'm going to write a movie about Dr Lichtenberg and we're going to read it out yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just it's going to be an or, super. origin story <laughs> it's really good um, I thought no, yeah, brought them all to life. It was fantastic. I'm curious how much my accent down. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. I was I was like really Mexican at some point, so then all of a sudden I was just like generic American guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did give you a tough a tough uh, break there. Yeah, I don't mind it. First first line. You know, there's some Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. I knew I knew I was in too deep when I was literally sat writing the first page. With Google Translate, over that <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the way to go for this. <laughs> to be fair, you, you what, chose what the, the right, you right, you <laughs> chose the right person for the job. Y'all have spent some time. I remember none of it though. I was trashed most of the time, but I think that would like Ramon would have been the same. So it's my <laughs> inhabit Ramones was certainly great. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was really fun. I'm really like hyped now about writing the rest, the rest of it. But Luke snapped the second one. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm and I, I know I, I already in my head written the story. It's why I've been a bit quiet. <laughs> but you know the, the oh yes, yeah, so yeah. see the wheels turning. Right? <laughs> the, the other, you, the you, other, you, like you've set it up in a beautiful fashion, and and I, you, you think about about shows that are because obviously this is completely different from 
what's out there, but it also has a lot of roots in other places. I think of like Suicide Squad. Yeah, it's um, obviously the first a bit one. Suicide Squad, a bit X Men, Misfits, a bit Heroes, a bit Misfits. Heroes, yeah. You know, save the it, shit. It, oh, it's it, a line you save the friends, save, save the universe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was that was probably the bit where I was a bit potentially close to the bone, but um, yeah, it's obviously got obvious inspirations, but I think uh, yeah, try to mix them and subvert them a little bit, maybe. Cool. I liked it. Good. The 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 the, the one the concept I liked as well is I like that Phil's character is like it can like revert ages by complete happenstance because it's a really interesting sort of like narrative device because you introduce this concept that we somehow have photos from the future, but that is no help of determining Phil's character's age. And I'm yeah. love, I love that because I love the idea that like oh like this is like really helpful device like oh look this is us older but it doesn't necessarily have to be them older, I mean it does but if there was a photo of just Phil's character on his own and he looks older everyone would assume this is a lot in the future but it literally just as easy yeah, could be tomorrow. Yeah, because he's bouncing between. Yeah. I love what that. was Bur- Burge who was uh, apart from Lichtenberg? How do you say it, Adam? Lichtenberg. Lichtenberg. And research um, here, guys. Research. Lichtenberg means pile of bodies. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Slightly more sinister, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Subversive. <laughs> but but Birdie's character was Ellie. Did we, find, did we find out what her power was? No, you didn't Sorry? find out what her power was. She was very um, vague about it, wasn't she? She was so very was... vague about it. There is a clue in her name, if you caught that, to, as to my original feeling for it. Um, I can talk about Excellent. it if you want. It's completely up to you guys. What was her name again? <laughs> Ellie? Ellie Akora. Um, so Akora. I can, her, uh, the sh- the, again, the shit idea that I had originally when I was put, cast in this kind of group of just ridiculously pointlessly powered people was that she could speak to ghosts, but only celebrity ghosts. Oh, Akora, <laughs> right. So she could only speak to a ghost who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> I, I love that. I genuinely love that. Because it really help it, like for the read through aspect of it getting like one of us guys to play like some bloody ancient celebrity speaking to oh, exactly. fuck, that's that, great. that was literally the idea I just I had in my oh wouldn't it be funny if like suddenly Freddie Mercury pops up that'd be, that'd be great <laughs> oh, and then it just spiraled from there like I love it. anybody I really enjoyed and, uh, that so yeah that was the stupid idea I heard that she's she's suddenly either possessed or can just talk to um celebrity ghosts it's tricky now, isn't it? Because it's, it's hard not, not to useful. envision those ideas going forward. But obviously, it's up to to Luke to see what. The next I'm step scared is. to ask you too many questions. Yeah, yeah. You because don't I don't to, want uh, to. I don't want yeah. to ha- sort of. You know, take take the lead, so take, to speak. Yeah, uh, like I don't want to tread on what you've done, but and you've also given me a real, a really nice idea for that. And to, but, but equally, I don't want to erase what you've done. No, it's fine. I think that, as I said, that's why I think it was so hard to write because I had these fairly like throwaway ideas, and then I changed them as I was writing anyway because, to be honest, it felt too ridiculous when I first started out. That it was just, it was just like, well, what's the, what's the point? Like, so it needed a bit of drama in there somewhere. But um, no, I was conscious of like, like you said, Yola, with the whole like setting up a, using an actual like narrative and stuff like that, like, and kind of the world type side of things. But, I didn't want to cast too much of a shadow of it. I kind of like we've we've been joking about Luke just taking it into space in the next episode, like completely randomly, like so like we joke. Which and that and that's that's perfectly fine, obviously. And I, I think, um, yeah, I think I was wary of not wanting to like start a story that is that is necessarily my story because that was that wasn't that wasn't the point. But um, yeah, so don't 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 run with my idea necessarily. I think because. It but still, it's a really interesting jumping-off point. Um, do you know when you want to say more, but you can't say <laughs> anything? Um, definitely. Um, okay. Lovely. I, I, I really, do. I, I, oh, I, I, question. Oh, sorry. Can I? So, so Aaron, he's yep. um, the man spider, right? Yes. The arms that come Aaron out. Kidd. Aaron like Kid. Aaron Kid. Arachnid. Uh, <laughs> see what you did gone there. deep on this guy, I tell you. I've not been wasting so, my time sat staring Ar- at a blank screen. <laughs> Aaron, when you said the arms, just I can't recall, were they hit 
extra limbs, like his own extra arms. Think of like Goro in Mortal Kombat. Yes, or, he's got two or, extra arms and two extra legs. So, but they're not spider arms or spider legs yet. Well, that's, what do you mean? I, 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 I don't know. I didn't particularly think about whether they had hands at the end. I don't know. This yeah, he's, he's, he's great. Yeah, it's up completely. Just go, off, head, go, off, go off what's yeah, on the want. page and then take it from there. <laughs> Interpret it how you like. He's just going to be. He's, he's just going <laughs> to leave and just. We're going to follow him, leave everyone else behind, and he's just going to be going to run a massage parlor. <laughs> <gonna go> <laughs> Absolutely. That was really cool. And again, it's like it was a. It's one of those things where it was a, like in my head it was just kind of made me chuckle a little bit. Where it's like, oh, there's this guy who's been bitten by a spider, but he's not a Spider Man. He's just shy. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And then when you're writing it, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not that good. Um, and then I, yeah, I don't know. Like the, the only part that I'm probably not too keen on upon reflection now is when they're they're doing the obvious like joke about Spider Man and, and questioning his, what powers he's got. He's, that was potentially a bit shite and a bit corny, but <laughs> I quite enjoyed it. No, I didn't mind it's it. Quite nervous, isn't it? But you know what it is. It's still good. I think that's yeah, set, that that sets up as I, I think that that's a good way of setting up the um, the, the 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 scene descriptors as a narrator as well. In that, like he, you know, the the, the scene descriptor narrative can joke as well, sort of thing. Yeah, I exactly. Happened. I think I, I dropped that in there. I think after we were talking about it, yeah, the, you know, uh, yeah, an arachnid based superhero would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that exactly. Quite cool. Um, but yeah. No, I, I did have fun getting into it. It was just uh, one, getting the, getting the ideas up and running was, was quite difficult. Cool. Once the, and I, I can't remember whether I told you this, told you guys this or not. But I essentially, I did essentially write it like line by line. I because it was hard, yeah, it was a slog. Yeah. But I essentially just, I was just writing it as I go. It's not like I kind of thought right, I'm going to start here and then I'm going to end here. It was literally like right, I'll just type and. <laughs> It was actually like line by line See for the most part, and then I, if something kind of made sense a bit later on, I'd go back and like tweak something earlier on. But generally speaking, it was just like an ongoing sort of train of thought rather than particularly planned out, which was kind of by by design, I would say. Um, again, just just try not to get too wrapped up in, in the story. It was just like a a dump of thoughts, kind of on on the go, really. I do think it was probably the 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 hardest task. Like, I don't think. Any, obviously, I know Phil and Luke. You've not um, mm-hmm. like written, written, written stuff yet, but you you will. And it, I think starting from nothing, nothing yeah, is, uh, page. is is yeah, it's challenging. It's hard. It's hard anyway. Like mm-hmm. if you start in any project, but let alone like oh, and uh, having it fit within the parameters of what we're trying got to do it for the lads as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's like it's like be creative now it's that like concept of like write something <laughs> like the entire concept of this but suddenly and stuff is great and stuff but then like there's fundamentally that moment where you're looking at a blank page and you just have to write something <laughs> not necessarily yeah. anything i think that's going to be like the biggest crutch really is that the, the Do you know what though I, I disagree because because adam's managed to write something that i'm quite excited about yeah me too i'm super excited and and, and, and considering if we're talking the similar to give or take length we've done today that's that's perfect that's a perfect jumping off point it's not too much it's not too little um i I think that's very manageable and and i'm excited to 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 tangle with these characters i sort of i always feel like because that was 19 19 pages i think um but i almost kind of feel like having a starting point like so I did like not the first one I, th- I feel like I could probably write more and you could probably get an, I- an idea of what you're going to do a bit better and just like f- yeah through it once the sort of once there's a but something, something to like base on, just I say that, actually actually start this that starting thing is is so hard and just trying to establish what the what it is you're going to be doing I think that's what it was like I said it was a struggle to a struggle to kind of get there so I feel like when it, when it next comes round to me and this is an established kind of arc of what we're doing or there's at least you know things to, to bounce off on I think it'll be it'll be easier I think mm. for me that's what I feel like anyway but no I, uh, I, I I'm i I'm happy I've done it I'm glad I've done it and I'm happy that you guys uh, read it so well and 
appear to enjoy it, thankfully. So. And at least you don't have to worry about it. The pressure's off you yeah, for, for yeah. four weeks. Another month. No, for, 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 well, for five weeks. Is it four or five? Or long? Long? Uh, is it two weekly or one weekly? Are we doing it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I am going to try and get this script done within a week. So it's ready. I've I've got I've got time. I've carved time out. I've um, got a free weekend. And if I'm very honest with you, as soon as we stop this, I'm going to go sit down and, and map <laughs> you know, everything when out. Would anyway. be a good time to write, Luke. Which, like, I, I thought about this the other day when we were talking about um, squeezing. But when you're like commuting in the morning, yeah, that, I feel like that's exactly when I'm going to be such writing. Such a good time in my mind. Like, I would, I would, I would love to have that I've kind got, of time to just be like. Well, the thing is, I've got passively and be like, oh yeah. I have an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon in the, when, I, when I come home, either way, um, to, to sit with this. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I, 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 th- I, think, I, I think you and I, I might want to have a bit of discussion with you just to mm. nail out a couple of details um, just for the continuity. But let me just say that, you, that I liked it enough that I'm not going to go stupid. <laughs> which, which, which is which is big because um, as Yola will attest, I, I was I was going to go weird. I was very from the get go. You like you said, he, oh Luke's going to take us into space straight away. It wasn't that far removed from that. <laughs> let's, let's see, I think. That, I mean, that that could work. It, it probably could. You know, when we're like twenty five episodes in and we're all going up to Gargantua ten up in space. <laughs> you know, but. Gargantua Until then, oh, yes, perfect Time. reference. Time. Tying, linked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. So Can I ask about the casting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> What made you decide on those roles? Like, what? How? You know. Was it was it like straight away as you were writing the character, or did that come after you had the finished thing? Uh, you wanting to know why you got the doctor? Is that because <laughs> you were born no, just, for it? I, I was thinking. I was more thinking like as soon as I saw Ellie, like a pale <laughs> teenage girl, I was like, yeah, well, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so some some, uh, I yeah, Ellie. Um, I, I, I did write with the idea of well yeah that's that's Birch and that was kind of a running gag from previous obviously like games and stuff we played where you'd always seem to end up as a teenage girl which I just thought yeah I just, I'll keep that going that works, works well yeah, that works absolutely well so yeah that that was that was a no brainer to be honest um, the rest uh, the rest probably just kind of happened as I was writing I think the, probably the closest the closest one that as well as that, that I kind of wrote with somebody in mind was probably um, Ted for, for Phil. Yeah. I put very fit. specifically for well shit. <laughs> <laughs> well shit. Well, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, then the, the two just kind of slotted into place there. Um, and then yeah, the, the Colonel and, and Aaron were the smaller parts. So I thought yeah, I'll just give those two to to me. Yeah. When when you wrote the Colonel, were you <coughs> picturing Tommy Lee Jones? Tommy Lee I, Jones. I was thinking Full oh, Metal Jacket, but yeah, this is oh, this is a cool point. So yeah, any any actually, if you're going to make it into a film, um, no, I didn't picture Tommy Lee Jones. I, well, I, you, Captain America: The First Avenger. He's a uh, he's uh, in that, isn't he? He's um, he's superior. Oh yeah, he is. Mm. Got that. Um, that's that's the ab- absolute vibe that I was getting from it. No, I didn't know. I think I was just thinking like, who was? In my head, he was just like a massive guy, like generic kind of brutish man. So I don't think that necessarily fits with anybody I can think of. I suppose, hmm. but but the, the, in terms of like attitude and stuff, yeah, I think Phil's right with the you know, the classic guy from from Full Metal Jacket who then reprised that role in any film that needed a, a drill sergeant. In, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I don't know. On his CV, it's just like just a drill sergeant, just <laughs> yeah. over and over again. Generic army man. He was a drill army. sergeant in real life, wasn't he? The guy. He was apparently. Yes. That's where Is he that true? Him. Yeah, that's where he got all of his patter from. That's why he, I think Kubrick hired him. All right. I don't know any other thoughts on on casting. That's quite that's quite an interesting an interesting thought. 
the, um, did you cast me as a, a Spanish guy because I look Spanish? My resemblance to Enrique it Iglesias. Was, <laughs> it was pre-moustache as well, so I, I was obviously like seeing into the future. <laughs> <laughs> I look like uh, it's like he'll, he'll eventually look like Al Chapo. <laughs> do you know? I, 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 do you know when you first started reading in Formula, I pictured you. Do, do, do you know Oscar Diaz? No, no, not Oscar Diaz. What's uh, he's, that's why he's character in a uh, in um, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. What's he called? Do you know the Mexican actor? Um, he plays like the same guy in everything. What's he called? He's called Os- he's, his character's Oscar Diaz. What's he? Danny uh, Trejo. Danny Trejo. Yeah, Danny Trejo. Yeah, I, I initially imagined him. Imagined you as. I should have. Should have gone one of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that. That's partly why. So the the premise of But Suddenly is that as we finish every episode, we'll finish on that very note. Maybe not in the same verbiage, but suddenly. But each episode will end in such a way that it allows a the of yeah sets up the next uh, yeah the handing of the baton. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, Luke, you're gonna go gonna go next. Um. um and then we'll see where we see where we fall. Yeah, I I wonder if it'd be after we've all done our initial print on the story, if we necessarily change the order up or have it open again, rather than necessarily following the same pattern. It as long as everybody writes once, perhaps in the cycle. Cycle, yeah. Yeah, because then it might. Yeah, you could get to the point where say we get to the end of the cycle and whoever's last the next person might have like a really cool idea who's not necessarily the, the person in turn order if you see what I mean. so yeah and it, and it could it could be cool if um the um, so that eventual or- kind of thing. <laughs> but also the the eventual audience could have input on the order yeah 100 hmm. percent admire the good admire the optimism yeah man <laughs> beginning of great things <laughs> I look forward to do it regardless anyway I look forward to just carrying yeah. the script regardless of anything I, do, I just want to write to impress impress you a lot really <laughs> you won't good start Adam good start <laughs> you won't ouch <laughs> so should we should we close it there yeah yeah I think so it's, yeah uh, turn off the show but so I'm gonna sign it off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.